Hello, and welcome to the very first of Andre's Artist Profiles, doing as many uh, reviews of different records that I've bought. I decided to take the visual advice, anyway, of uh, one of my uh, people on here I subscribe to, Scotty's Record Shop. Hi there, Scotty. To do some artist profiles of my own, and these are going to be CDs, okay, and not vinyl, but this is what I've got. And today is the 61st birthday of uh, singer, keyboardist, and bass player for Rush, uh, Getty Lee. Now, I realize that I could have done this particular artist profile on uh, Alec Lifeson or uh, Neil Peart's birthday or even anyway. But I decided, you know, Rush are a power trio. And they're all a very collective uh, kind of band anyway, so... Uh, I'm going to do my artist profile of the day, and it's going to be dum da da dum Rush. Now this is Rush's first album from 1974, and it's simply called Rush. There are the songs on the back of it. Finding My Way, I think, was the hit of this uh, Canadian band. Uh, there's the group at that time. Uh, that's their original drummer, uh, by the way. Make a little close-up on him. John Rutsey. There's Getty right there. Alex Lifeson. Uh, John Rutsey got sick and left the group and died. And was replaced by Neil Peart for the next album, Fly By Night. Now, this is Rush's first big hit album. Uh, I get most of these CDs, the Rush remasters, from the now-defunct BMG Music Club. My uh, ex-boyfriend uh, was really into Rush, and... He got me into them. You know, I'm not super into everything Rush did, but they did some amazing music over the years. Mixing hard rock and progressive art rock and jazz fusion. This is one of my favorite albums of theirs, Caress of Steel. This is the one that has Lakeside Park on it, Bastille Day. They really get to stretch out and be very progressive on this particular album. Their second of 1975. Now, this is one of their best-known records, 2112, from 1976. There's that famous Rush symbol that everybody knows. Picture of the band inside, the trio. Um, Farewell to Kings, their 1977 uh, album. Uh, Closer to the Heart was their first really, really major hit. I mean, they had hits before that, but that was their first, like, really crossover hit. You know, uh... AOR rock, well, AOR wasn't really about hits, so. Uh, this is uh, a very complex album uh, called Hemispheres, and there's a song on here called The Trees. It could either be taken literally or metaphorically. Uh, it seems to be about the environment, but it could be about politics as well, or both. Now, Neil Peart was a very literate man, read a lot. Now, this is their 1980 album. Sorry about that little crack in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, Permanent Waves. Now. Uh, I remember my aunt coming up here around 2008, and I had this album in the car, and she's like, turn on Spirit of Radio, you know, and she and my brother, my uncle grew up on Rush, so this was a really big album for them, 1980. Uh, moving Pictures, eh, well, you know, Tom Sawyer, you know, YYZ, what more can I say? This was their big breakthrough, you know, their, their Sgt. Pepper their thriller, whatever. This was their big album. This is a live document of their show at that time. I got this used for a buck, <laughs> I think. Uh, Exit stage left. It's from 1981 uh, from their Moving Pictures tour. Uh, Signals. This was the beginning of Rush getting very heavily into electronics and synthesizers. And they had a song on here called uh, The Analog Kid. And subdivisions were big hits. They had a lot of videos of these songs at that particular time. There's a picture of the band in there. I like this album. It's not for the taste of every single Rush fan, but I, I really like it. This is actually one of my favorite Rush albums, and I know that a lot of... Uh, I, I heard from my ex that Rush fans occasionally call themselves winners. Well, at least he did. And such people probably do not like this album. But uh, Red Sector A, Distant Early Warning. It's kind of about the end of the Cold War. Uh, about Perestroika, you know, and all of that. There's Rush at that time. 
this sounds a little bit more like a police new wave kind of uh somewhat more of a jazzy i don't know jazzy funk album i guess like i said like sting police that sort of thing but i love it uh this one gets a little more rockier but it's still in the same spirit power windows from 1985 there's a song called the big money on here it's definitely had has rush's sound there's the band at that particular time. I know this is an album that Rush fans absolutely do not like, most of them, but I really love this one. It's called uh, Hold Your Fire, and there's a song on here called Time Stand Still, featuring Amy Mann, which, like Grace Under Pressure, I, I really think that this is one of Rush's most underrated albums. Uh, this is another one, very light-minded. Again, uh, kind of to hold your fire, what Power Windows was to Grace Under Pressure. You know, kind of a more guitar-oriented uh, version of the same sound. Uh, this particular album came out in 1989. Now, Roll the Bones. This is my favorite. Alex Lifeson actually raps on the title cut. One of their funkier albums. You know, you wouldn't think Rush is being funky, but this is one of their funkiest albums from 1991. But, you know, grunge came along and, you know, kind of killed that off a little bit. Anyway, there's some gaps in here, so forgive us. This is uh, Test for Echo from 1996. You know, a very hard progressive album, very much in the classic Rush style. And this is Different Stages Live from 1998. I think for the tour from the Test for Echo album. And there it is, my Rush Collection, and happy birthday to Mr. Getty Lee.